Good morning. This is Stacy and Tim. Tim from Let's Cook Y'all. No cooking today, but we are gonna eat out. We're headed out on a little adventure. Thought we'd try to try bring you guys along. So first stop is some breakfast. So there is some food involved. So if we get a speeding ticket, are you gonna tape it off? I might. Are you planning on getting a speeding <laughs> ticket? Please <laughs> tell me you're not planning on speed. I'm not planning. Oh yeah, I'm planning on speed. Yeah, Tim has a very lead foot. He's famous in our family. For I'm that. not planning on getting a ticket. Yeah, that's. Yeah, we're gonna hope that. So anyway, first stop, food. The double line at Chick Fil A is not too bad. All right, I didn't record the nice lady. She came out. She had her tablet. She gave me a menu. I got to pick. She scanned our Chick Fil A app for the points and told us which car to get behind. So food should be coming up in a couple minutes. And she took our money. And she took, well, she couldn't do cash, but she did our car. They can do everything with these tablets. Pretty amazing. We love Chick-fil-A. They're extremely efficient. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Have a good day. Okay, so Tim got a sausage, egg, and cheese, and hash browns, which he won't eat, so I will probably eat those. As much as he loves potatoes, he does not like hash browns or tater tots. I'll eat them, I just banana, my favorite. So they're mine? They're or we're yours. splitting them? They're yours. Okay, and I'm trying to be good. I bought, got, bought, I got an egg white grill, which is grilled chicken and just egg whites, and I brought some juice from home. Tim's got some coffee. We're gonna eat and then stop for gas and then head towards the coast. Onward. Onward. Sneak peek of what's coming. I wasn't quick enough. They're building a Costco. Can you read it? I can't read it because of the sun, but we're at the Kroger and we've got a 10 cent fuel bonus. So instead of the 198, we're gonna get it for 188 a gallon. Full service. Takes care of me. We have had breakfast. We are gassed up. We are settling in for a couple hours, few hours drive down to the coast. I don't know what the dynamic is in your family and our family. Tim always says the driving. So I like to settle in and read. I brought a book. I learned once I married Tim that there is not everyone in the world can read while they're in a vehicle. Can you read while you're riding in a vehicle? I can if I need to, but I don't like to. Yeah, he gets not really car sick, but he just doesn't like it. And apparently, I don't have any problems with it, so I'm gonna settle in and read. And Tim is always my faithful chauffeur, is gonna drive me down. I don't like to read when there's shadows Stro going strobing. across the road and it strobes. Definitely a lot of that, if you can see all the sun and shadows. But it's a beautiful day. It was about 36 when we left. But it's I supposed am, to be in the 60s. I'm an excellent driver in the driving. <laughs> from Rain Man, and that's one of our favorite quotes. He is an excellent driver. I'm an excellent driver all over the road, but he's really good in the driveway. An excellent driver. Excellent driver. He's an excellent driver. We have plugged up Waze. We like to use the app, I guess it's Waze, W-A-Z-E, to travel with, and to give us an estimated time of arrival to try to help Tim with his control, his speeding, and to let us know if there's police around. So. Uh, leave us a comment if that's an app you like to use or you use another one when you drive or travel. And do you actually use ways to mark things like when there's a hazard on the road? Yeah, that's the other thing. We do like to mark that. It's kind of fun when we make these long trips. It's kind of something that keeps me entertained. Go back to what you were doing. I'm, I'm going to cut that out. Go back to what you are doing. I'm reading my book. This is Tim's view when we're driving down the road. Big 
Jumbo. It's not Las Vegas or Atlantic City, but it's big for here. There's a Hard Rock Casino down here. Across, is that what that is? Oh great. You've arrived be here at your destination. Yep. We're gonna be here a while. Tim's finding a shortcut to the long lines. We came to the coast to see the historically correct replicas of the Nina and the Pinta, two of the 1492 Caravel ships that Columbus sailed to the New World in, and we're going to tell you guys a lot more about them. It was very interesting. They're smaller than these modern day ships. These ships are small. The Nina was 65 feet in length and had a crew of 24. The Pinta, 85 in length with a crew of 26, which is amazing. Captain spending the majority of their time in this area. This is where they would steer and they would navigate from, okay? If you look around, you do not see a ship's wheel anywhere. Well, the wheel wasn't around yet, okay, to the beginning of the 1700s when the English brought it around, okay? So how Columbus would steer the ship, how we steer the ship today is using this long beam here called the tiller. The tiller is attached to the rudder. And from where you can see the water line, it drops down seven feet into the water. Okay, so both the Nina and the Pinta need at least seven feet of water in order to float and navigate around safely. The Santa Maria, on the other hand, a larger ship, more of a cargo ship at the time, she's going to need more like 10 to 12 feet of water to float and navigate around. Right now, we're in nine feet of water. Okay, so the Santa Maria is not going to get in here, as well as about 75% of the locations that we visit around the United States, she simply wouldn't be able to get up to the docks, okay? So that is why the Portuguese caravel was selected by Columbus on uh, every single one of his voyages and really became the ship that he favored. 1992 has logged well over half a million miles, uh, visited well over a couple thousand ports, been through the Panama Canal 12 times all the way up as far as Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Okay, and this is the 10th year that the two ships have been traveling around of the United States together. Down below here uh, is what is known as the captain's quarters. The only private area on board the ship. Remember you have all the smelly farm animals in the main hold there. So that is where Columbus would keep up to date with his logs, which he was extremely detailed on, and to get a little privacy. Okay, only four feet of headroom down there, only one way in, one way out. So it's an easy place to get locked down if the crew want to turn on you, okay, which almost happened. Okay, on that first voyage across, they hadn't seen land in 30 days, and they were getting impatient. Okay, if it wasn't for the simple fact they started seeing birds flying around, branches in the water, that gives you a good indication that land is not far. And lucky for his sake, they okay, less than 48 hours later, they bumped into what he called San Salvador. It's uh, modern day Bahamas. All right, and from there, did exploring around the Caribbean, Central America, but never stepped foot, okay, on North American soil. Okay, before Columbus left on that first voyage, 
Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain, who funded all his voyages, promised him 10% of all the wealth that he would find in the New World. Comes back after that fourth and final voyage, ends up getting absolutely nothing. He ends up dying a very poor and broken man at the end of his life, right around the age of 54 years old. But went out on these ships, the Portuguese caravel, and bridged the old and the new world together. Okay? The Nina made the entire first voyage, bringing Columbus safely home. She accompanied the Grand Fleet of the second voyage to Hispaniola. Columbus se selected her out of 17 ships for his flagship on an exploratory voyage to Cuba, and he then purchased a half share in her. She was the only vessel in West Indies waters to survive the hurricane of 1495, and then brought Admiral Columbus back to Spain with 120 passengers in 1496. This is a map showing where these replica ships visit all over the Northern Hemisphere 11 months out of the year. If these replica ships are coming anywhere near you and you enjoy history, you should check them out. Not on that thing, but they're looking for crew. They got, there was a sign. They need someone the to cook. I know, I could go. I'd be only be gone 11 months out of the year. Would you miss me? You think they have a crock pot? No, crock pot. No Insta pots. None of that stuff. And they're still a line. We were in that line all the way out to the road to see them. Did you like them? I did. It's kind of cool. The Nina is tiny. The Penta's a little bigger, but golly. Can't believe they got that many people on those ships. All right, we climbed up. Get an overview. That's the Nina. And that's the Penta. And the Santa Maria won't come in waters this shallow, so they don't have a replica of it. This is where we're parked. Tim's gonna brave it out into traffic. Gonna cross the bridge over the Biloxi Bay, going from Biloxi to Ocean Springs, where we're gonna go have lunch. Had a couple people recommend this little hole in the wall called BB's. This is Tim's kind of place. BB's was a hidden gem in Ocean Springs. We were so glad we stopped here. They're famous for their gumbo, their open face roast beef sandwich, and of course their po' boys. Tim graciously agreed to split with me. We're gonna start off by splitting. Tim's gonna split everything with me. We're starting off with some crab and corn bisque. Oh no. Just kidding. What? Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> We're gonna split a shrimp po' boy. It does. Oh, it looks delicious. And sweet potato fries. And then do we have room for dessert too? I know I do. We have room for dessert. I do. Awesome. Awesome. First time to devour that. Hey, what are you doing in my dessert? What are you doing? You've got coffee. That's mine. What are you doing eating my dessert? Everybody's got a gift. That's chocolate. Can you film? I eat. That's chocolate. That's mine. You know the rolls? We're going to walk around a little bit in downtown Ocean Springs. That's the train depot. And we're going to walk down and look for the Anderson Art Museum. Mardi Gras over. We got a little residual decorations. We accept all major credit cards, especially your husband's. Still beads left, hanging from the trees. Shrimp factory. Probably would have been a great place to eat, the shrimp factory. Love the courtyard. Shops. Still Mardi Gras. And as Tim Azaleas are already blaming, look at this. Did you see the Azaleas? It's a little early. Masters is coming when the Azaleas start blaming.
We've lived in Mississippi practically our whole lives, and neither of us had ever visited the Walter Anderson Museum of Art. Disclaimer, neither of us are really big artsy people. Tim is much more artistic and creative than I am. I'm much more of a numbers girl. I knew very little about Walter Anderson and his life. We learned a lot. This was the original mural that he painted on the walls of the Ocean Springs Community Center. He believed in volunteering, and they only paid him a dollar to paint all of this. It showcases all of his different kinds of art. So this is just painted cinder block? Yes. Wow. wow. Well, I mean, there is a plaster. Oh, there's a plaster of it. Okay. Um, this one These are the original six murals that Walter Anderson painted during the Great Depression in 1935 as part of the Works Progress Administration. Uh, the first three were Native American life in Ocean Springs and on the coast, and the other three were present day. He also carved a chest for his father, who was a prominent grain merchant. His father wanted him to go into business and go to school. He wanted to be an architect. We learned as we went through the museum that Walter was a very eccentric and later mentally ill person, but he wanted to be an artist and not a businessman. Besides the sculpture, he also painted pottery that was made locally. This was a timeline of Walter's life. He did get married. He and his wife had four children. His wife was a very strong and brave woman. She had to put up with a lot. He had bouts of mental illness and was institutionalized a couple of times. He did some very eccentric things that we'll tell you about in a second. What does it feel like? Mm -hmm. Like clay? It's kind of like clay. Besides the bouts of mental illness, Walter was a very eccentric person. He and his wife did separate and live in different residences. He continued to pursue his art and actually secured an art show at the Brooklyn Museum. However, I can't imagine leaving my spouse a note that says gone to China. As we learned from the video and you read here, he left his wife a note that says gone to China. He disappeared. He traveled across China and was robbed. He was trying to make his way to Tibet and he came home prematurely. In addition to walking across China, we learned that he was eccentric enough to ride his bicycle from Mississippi to Mexico, which is no short trip. He also took a small skiff and would row 12 to 16 miles out to some of the barrier islands off the coast of Mississippi and spend weeks or months at a time. They have all of his journals from then. One of his trips, he came back, had to go to the hospital in New Orleans and died less than a month later. I cannot imagine the talent of turning pages with my left hand and drawing with my right hand. He truly was talented. His brother Peter owned a pottery shop here in town called Shearwater Pottery. We wanted to visit. We didn't make it. Walter and his other brother did most of the decorating of the pottery that was beautiful and functional. They actually have his original boat that he found in pieces and fitted back together and would row out to Horn Island and the Barrier Islands. He put all of his supplies in metal trash cans and would row out and spend weeks or months at a time by himself on this tiny barrier island away from his family. He had a locked room in the cottage he lived in after he and his wife separated that they now call the Little Room. It was disassembled and brought to the museum in 1990. After he died, his wife broke the lock off this locked room and discovered that Walter had painted the ceilings, the floors, the windows, everything, top to bottom with murals. She also found thousands of sketches and drawings and journals from his times out on Horn Island and the the Barrier room. Islands. They had no idea any of this existed yeah, apparently yeah. during his lifetime. Even the ceiling. painted every surface, didn't he? Mm -hmm. When we come out, apparently the thing to do is to put your stickers that you got to tour the museum out on the trash can. As everybody else did, so we did it too. Now what are we going to do? Get our sticker back. What's the mural of? B&S Ranch. Mm -hmm. Just on the side of a building. Bottle trees are really big down here. A lot of people have them in our neighborhood. If you've not seen a bottle tree before, here's what they look like. 
to leave downtown Ocean Springs, got caught by a train. Tim says that's marshy looking stuff. Whatever that means. <laughs> not the beach. It's definitely not the beach. So we're following the GPS, which means we're taking shortcuts, not the scenic Beach Boulevard or the scenic way out, but we are headed away from the Gulf Coast back towards our house. Ugh. Were you yawning? Mm, I'm sleepy. What do you mean you're sleepy? You've got to drive me home. Near now. You can't take a nap. Do you need me to drive? Nah. I'll nap with one eye at a time. Did you have fun today? I did. How What's your you? favorite part? Oh. The food. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the museum. Did you really? Yeah, crazy I, man. He was kind of nuts. I figured it would be the ships. I liked the ships. I can kind of uh, empathize with... Crazy schizophrenia? No, with the wife. Oh gosh, golly. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to live on Lick Skillet Road. Probably some good cooking going on there. At Lick Skillet? Yeah, if you want to lick the skillet, it's Lick the good. skillet. Lick skillet. Oh my. They won't let it cool off though. Now where are we going? Oh, no. I didn't get him ordering, but we stopped at a Sonic. Got some drinks and some snacks. Tim is unable to drive on an empty stomach or a parched anything. Are you hungry or are you thirsty? Both. All right, Sonic Snack is a Route 44 cherry limeade for Tim, a little smaller one for me, some cheese sticks, and I didn't know they had pretzels. Go figure. So think that'll get you home? That'll get me started. We are headed home. Thanks for spending some time with us today. We had fun on the coast. Did you have fun? Mm -hmm. Ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Don't sleep in the car. Don't sleep and drive. Public service announcement. Thanks for stopping by our channel. Have a wonderful and blessed day, y'all.